October 4th was a pinnacle day for me and it was a day that was a long time coming. I had spent 10 months sort of wondering if I was ever going to have the opportunity to get back into the vehicle. It wasn't uh, that clear to me uh, how the lineup was going to go and I had worked hard to prepare myself if the opportunity was there. I remember not being able to sleep much the night before. Uh, my in-laws had come to town. Uh, they had to mess the bedroom. I was downstairs on the couch, had maybe three hours of sleep. The Discovery Channel, the first episode of our first space flight had aired just the night before. And it was very difficult to watch, knowing that uh, we were gonna be back under the spotlight again early uh, Monday morning and got into scale around 4 a.m., briefed at 4.30. Five o'clock, uh, we were doing the weigh-in, and the weigh-in was critical. We measured everything to the hundredth of a pound, and uh, I'm the last guy to get on the skills to make sure that we had the 600 pounds necessary to satisfy the X-Prize criteria. And as I'm uh, walking out to the spaceship, my mother-in-law comes out from the crowd to give me a hug. It's rather cool that time of morning, and uh, she's carrying a cup of coffee, and uh, she reaches arm around me to uh, give me this hug wonder what the plan is for the coffee and I realized there is no plan as it uh, pours all the way down my uh, flight suit. One of the engineers after they got me inside the spaceship there said you know you're probably wearing 12 ounces out of a 16 ounce large cup of McDonald's coffee that represents about 400 feet of apogee. Weight is everything in the spaceship and 400 feet was the margin by which Mike had made it on his first attempt to space and so it was sort of on that note that the uh, cabin door was closed and, and off we went into history. It was a rewarding day for me personally. It was one also for the team. Everybody had been working hard around the clock. You know, by uh, 7.30, quarter to eight on a Monday morning, it was all over and uh, the champagne was, uh, was being broken out. A fabulous ending to a very difficult program for everybody involved. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Some of the uh, lesser known facts of that XPRIZE flight was the altitude record that was held by the X-15 program, Joe Walker, all the way back to 1963. And uh, Bert had just a few words of advice for me. And one of them was sort of uh, this golf analogy that he told me to you know, think of this flight as uh, take out your driver, keep your head down, swing smooth, go long kind of deal. And he really wanted to beat this X-15 record. The previous space flights, uh, we hadn't come close to it. And on this one, things just kind of clicked. It went just like uh, we had rehearsed in the simulator. We had a whole different way of flying the vehicle than the previous two flights. There was no reason to necessarily suspect that we had gotten that right, but we did. The little spaceship that could scooted right up uh, out of the atmosphere. We went up to 367,000 and some change, beating the old altitude record. The rocket motor performed flawlessly. The trajectory was straight. You know, it's very rewarding to see just how much you could get out of the vehicle when things went right, and uh, that was a flight that uh, really demonstrated it to us. You know, when you finally arrive in space, it is so rewarding. And the neatest thing about it is I can't spoil it for anybody just by talking about it because it's a, it's a very personal one. The rocket motor shuts down and uh, wonderful things happen. They happen just like that. The, the noise goes away, becomes very quiet. There's no shaking, shuddering vibrations from that motor and you get this instant karma of weightlessness. Even though I'm strapped down, and all the tension comes out of your limbs, everything is just, you're unencumbered. And then you have that magnificent view. And I was able to take some uh, photos that have done uh, well to capture the view that is up there, I think. Someone also gave me a uh, paper spaceship one just before I uh, walked on board and I pulled that out and tried to fly it unsuccessfully. But I, I certainly did appreciate my time there. And even though it's, Four minutes, it's not a long time, it's certainly long enough for you to uh, soak it in and take it in, appreciate it and uh, enjoy it. And even though I was still sort of in the uh, flight test mode, you cannot help but sort of appreciate the perspective that uh, these kind of flights put you into. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect including the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, 
With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. I've had so many opportunities to uh, come my way since uh, that flight. I mean, it was, I think it was around 9 o'clock on that morning we were talking to the President of the United States. I mean, that, it, that's, uh, that's pretty special in my book. Uh, I went on the David Letterman show. I've been able to uh, travel essentially around the world and sort of promoting space, commercial space, space tourism. And I've been able to uh, sort of uh, take the message to universities and uh, different organizations and groups. And, uh, spread the news about what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it, and uh, why these other groups and businesses uh, should care. And really sort of honored to be in that position, and uh, I, I take uh, the responsibility to share the message uh, sincerely and uh, have really enjoyed doing it. I think with uh, Spaceship Two now uh, on the heels of coming out the door, that a successful follow-on program will be what I look forward to doing uh, all along, and it uh, puts us on the map as no longer just another gimmick that, well, they had their uh, weekend of glory or they went around the world, but the so what uh, is going to be answered. And that's very satisfying. And I think it's really going to change the way people view space and give it the opportunity to do things that, uh, that influence our lives the way aviation has.